good morning, everyone. Welcome to the online inclusiveness meetup, looking back, moving forwards, conversations about student inclusion and belonging in higher education, learning from I belong. My name is Marieke Mewese and I am the project leader of the EU funded Erasmus Plus strategic partnership in higher education, which we named I belong. And I'm very honored that Professor Dr. Semya Dengtas, who is the Chief Diversity Officer of Erasmus University Rotterdam in the Netherlands, will officially open today's conference. And if you have any questions, you can ask them in the Q&A space on the I Belong conference space, uh, via which you see um, this event. Please, Semya, the floor is yours. Thank you, Marike. I'm very honored uh, to be able to open this wonderful conference uh, today. And uh, thank you for uh, inviting me uh, for the I Belong conference. As you said, my name is Simiha Dengtas. I'm the Chief Diversity Officer and my other job is just being Professor in uh, Behavioral Sciences. Next slide, please. I just want to share some of our vision and values at the Diversity and Inclusion Office uh, that we have uh, stated. And uh, we, we try to be an inclusive university that, that attracts and retains talented students, faculty and staff broadly representative of the diverse perspectives in society because uh, the, our university is in the region of Rotterdam, which has a very diverse population. Uh, we strive to be an inclusive university that is active in eliminating implicit and explicit barriers that prevent the full participation of members of the academic community. And we're active in developing policies, procedures and practices that promote that inclusive culture. Uh, we like to call ourselves FRESH, that stands for freedom of speech for everyone, which is indisputable, recognizing that competitiveness and innovation of the institution is enhanced by the diverse backgrounds, perspectives, knowledge and experiences of our students, faculty and staff members. Social equity, inclusion and dignity are right for all members of the EUR community and society as a whole. Harassment and discrimination in any form have no place at our university. Next slide, please. I have a, a quite a, a large team uh, in the diversity and inclusion office, which uh, is, uh, I would say, unique in the Netherlands. I have uh, a lot of experts in different areas. I have a day-to-day -day manager, Gwenda Brown, and uh, management support. We have uh, a communications advisor. We have an HR specialist in diversity and inclusion. We have a specialist in inclusive education and monitoring and assessments. And we have a whole team that is uh, uh, just recently built to work on the uh, outreach uh, project. I will uh, share more about that in a minute. So I, I have a large team, so I am able to do a lot within our university, which is one of the largest universities in, in the Netherlands. I have a budget uh, around 1.2 million euros per year. So it's, uh, it's, it's something that we can work with, to say uh, at least. Next slide, please. So the, the topics that we address are inclusive education, uh, monitoring our research on the institutional level, student engagement, inclusive HR and outreach. Just to, just to uh, give you an example how we work on uh, inclusive HR, just recently uh, the National uh, Monitor on uh, uh, Female Professors was launched and uh, what we have done in the past two years is to uh, develop and implement policy to make sure that we have more female professors in our university. And we were one of the universities lagging behind. We In 2017, we had approximately 14% female professors. Now, in, uh, in, uh, at the end of 2020, we had uh, 
approximately 25% female professors. So we had a steep growth and I'm very proud of that. On an institutional level, you have to think about uh, uh, inclusive communication, language matters and uh, representation matters in, in, in pictures and in stories, etc. Monitoring and research are, are very important to us because we don't want to work solely on uh, uh, storytelling and uh, we want to prevent that it becomes anecdotal. We want to work data-driven, knowledge-driven, so we also collect data, not just quantitative data, but also qualitative data. Uh, that makes our program um, uh, more science-based and uh, sometimes for me easier to discuss with, with the deans. All right, next slide, please. Today is about uh, I belong, uh, which is uh, very, very important. I find that such an important uh, uh, topic. And uh, like uh, you and uh, Marika has been working for many years now on inclusive education. We are doing that from the DNI office too. And to us, inclusive education has elements that we have uh, written down on this slide. All students feel connected with and at home at the university. So they feel belong, that they belong. Individual talents and skills flourish and show. And inclusive education also means teacher professionalization. And um, it also means that we have to embed in existing structures as much as possible if we develop and design new interventions, new ways to teach or new uh, teacher professionalization trainings. So uh, it's a lot of work, but it's, it's a holistic approach. You can't just uh, tap into one element and uh believe that you're already there but you guys already know all of that of course next slide we find student engagement very important and of course within our university and all uh, higher education student engagement is uh, is is seen as something that is crucial at uh, the erasmus university we found out that uh, some student groups were not represented as as well as we as we think they should be so we um, from the dni office we started with the formation of the erasmus first dni student council for equity diversity and inclusion SCADI. it's a it's a SCADI now is a sounding board and advice for dni policies uh, and they are creating an association's handbook with valuable information for associations uh, to be more equitable and uh, evaluation mentorship and internship programs of different companies. So they are very active in, in uh, participating in all sorts of domains within higher education and outside of higher education. We are initiating dialogues with various students and study organizations to determine their needs, thoughts on improving diversity and inclusion at UR. We don't want to be the ones who are deciding what they need. They should be able to uh, tell us that and so that we can facilitate uh, what they need. We're fostering dialogue and discussion between all students, including international and biocultural students on sexual safety, mental health in collaboration with student well-being at the Student Well-Being Festival and many more uh, topics. Next slide, please. One of uh, my dream projects was uh, the outreach, uh, outreach project. In uh, 2019, we went to UCLA, organized by uh, Mary Tupan, you all know her probably, and together we uh, went to, uh, to, to, to do a site visit and, on, and to, to learn from their outreach uh, programs. And it was a, such, such a valuable uh, couple of days because uh, we learned how they approach the, the community uh, approach and how they uh, experienced uh, uh, 
uh, the outreach program from the student perspective and from the staff perspective. And when we came back to the Netherlands, we didn't copy paste uh, a proposal, but we tried to see what we could use within the Rotterdam context. And um, our proposal was uh, granted with uh, two and a half million euros for four years. And we started last year. And it's about equal opportunities in education for historically underrepresented groups. Uh, we uh, focus on removing barriers and focusing on talent. And it has uh, three uh, pillars. Uh, the first one is early outreach. It's, uh, it elaborates our connection with underrepresented school pupils and students. It's already, it already starts in primary schools. Uh, goes further in secondary and then to higher uh, education. The second pillar is student-centered support, expand and improve student-centered support, like the title says. Again, it's, it's based on what do students need, not uh, based on what we can deliver or already delivering. So uh, we have many different students and we have to tap into their needs and see how we can uh, facilitate them even better. And the third pillar is about building new blocks. It's about enabling equity-based opportunity programs and activities of your community. Again, that could be for primary education, secondary or higher education, because we believe that the pipeline already starts in, in primary education and that we have to start developing programs already early in life. So this is very brief. Uh, 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 summary of what we're doing. If you want to know more about our uh, diversity and inclusion uh, interventions and programs, please visit our website on the Erasmus University uh, website. If you search for diversity and inclusion at UR, you will, you will find us. Just a, a, a final uh, a, uh, a final point. I think this is uh, what you are doing with I Belong is um, so important. Uh, I'm now almost 50 years old. I'm a first generation. I was a first generation student, uh, with, uh, born in Istanbul, migrated to the Netherlands. I am a, a first generation academic, uh, one of the few professors at uh, the Erasmus University with the background that I have. So I, I truly still feel what a lot of uh, students feel when they say, I, I'm not sure whether I belong at higher education. And that's, that's something I find painful, but at the same time, it, it uh, drives me uh, to, to, to work on these projects and to give as much support as I can to projects uh, like uh, uh, yours. Again, thank you for inviting me and have a great conference. Well, thank you uh, very much, uh, Semia. It's really impressive um, what you have done so far at, uh, at our uh, university. And of course, uh, I very much underline the importance uh, of your work. Um, we have some uh, questions, so hopefully you will be uh, um, willing to, to answer uh, those. Um, so, you mentioned uh, uh, the, the pipeline uh, that is so important in uh, creative, uh, creating inclusive uh, em environments throughout uh, the pipeline to make sure that uh, all uh, pupils and students uh, flourish and that their talents um, are recognized and acknowledged in uh, education. Um, how do you organize that in this broad context you are working. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so we, the, the, the first thing that we did is uh, connect to schools within uh, our city, to primary schools and secondary schools. And as we all know, worldwide, the pandemic has even uh, deepened the, the, the problems that we face when, when it comes to deprivation and uh, disparities uh, between uh, children and the opportunities their parents can provide, uh, think of homeschooling. 
And so the, the schools in, in our city were uh, very happy with, uh, with our approach. So they were very willing to participate in, in our programs. The second thing that we did is approach uh, uh, community initiatives uh, of parents, but also societal uh, organizations uh, to see how we can support uh, parents uh, so that so we wanted to include the, the, the broader community too. And the third um, uh, intervention or the, the third um, uh, initiative was to talk to teachers, of course, because we don't just want to focus on children or, or parents, but we also want to focus on teachers because we want an approach that addresses the system, not only, let's say, improving skills of children. So it should be an, uh, an holistic approach to, to our view. Thank you very uh, much, Claire, and also very uh, focused on the different uh, aspects which uh, you consider important in uh, building uh, communities uh, and pipelines. Uh, I see another question uh, popping up. Um, so there is a question uh, about um, the projects. Um, so one question is, if you could please outline which formats you offer to students uh, to give them more support uh, and uh, how um, your approach to inclusive teaching looks like. So those are two different questions, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the um, to, to start with uh, the last one. So uh, our uh, inclusive education specialist, uh, before she was an assistant professor in in university, wrote an a uh, an, uh, uh, project uh, proposal uh, on inclusive education, and that again had different aspects. Uh, that was, for example, about uh, inclusive communication, uh, skills training, but also building a knowledge platform that we're going to um, launch uh, coming year in the new uh, academic year. Uh, that's about providing teaching staff uh, with tools, very practical. We try to be very practical. We don't want to uh, just give advice, but also how can you organize an inclusive uh, classroom? And we also offer trainings for teachers. Uh, we collaborate with already existing experts within the Erasmus University. So it's, it's um, on the one hand, looking for opportunities to make changes in the structure. For example, looking at uh, the course literature that is being used. Is that diverse or is it just the Western approach? So we're doing a pilot right now, um, but also on the, the classroom culture. Is it inclusive? What type of communication do we use? And uh, there is a whole area of expertise in nonviolent communication, for example. That is all included in our approach. And the first question was about, I think, what do we offer to, to students? Yeah, that's, uh, that's still in development uh, stage. We first started with um, making the whole program, uh, at, uh, developing and designing the whole program. And now we're uh, developing the, the interventions because um, uh, we are also going to scientifically evaluate the whole program and also the separate interventions. And we have a PhD a student and a postdoc uh, researcher uh, starting, up, uh, starting up these uh, 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 research. We are now doing a qualitative study among students on uh, on the needs aspect. What do students need in these programs that are that go further than what we're already offering? Thank you, and I think that relates to another question. Um, 
The question is, who are the main influencers of sense of belonging of students in their pathway to higher education, uh, in your opinion? Well, that really depends, I think, uh, yeah, uh, on uh, whether they are in a primary school or secondary school or already in higher education. And, um, and so that's a very difficult, I find that a very difficult question uh, to, to answer. I think teachers have a tremendous influence on how, how you feel as a child when you are in school, whether you are sort of motivated to do to more or to, to be ambitious or whether you're told, well, maybe you should just uh, do this and don't uh, think ahead, uh, this is difficult enough for you, etc. Um, uh, and whether do you, whether you feel safe to ask questions? Uh, I mean, I did, one of my other PhD students did an, uh, um, did research in a school, among scholarship students at our liberal arts and sciences uh, school, and. Um, one of the things that we found out was, which wasn't very surprising, I have to say, is that the students who, who received the scholarship said that they sometimes were sort of anxious to ask specific questions because that they thought that would be um, stupid or that that would be uh, strange to ask that question. So that means that they were very insecure whether they, it was safe to ask any question. Well, and that's the difference with 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 students uh, who have parents with higher education. These differences we see in the classroom and outside the classroom. So I, I'm sorry. I, I'm I'm sure it's not a, a very clear answer, but it's very difficult to answer. Yeah, but I think it illustrates the importance of the theme and and that sense of belonging is really an individual fundamental need and it um, is impacted uh, by various stakeholders and, and, and contexts in the entire education. Absolutely, but there are also examples, I think these are not unique to, to Rotterdam also that uh, some of these scholarships, the scholarship students, for example, were asked by fellow students, are you the cleaning lady here? Because they they thought uh, you don't fit into the way you look, you don't fit in 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 the environment of of our school. So these and that's painful because that really is uh, an external sort of factor that that maybe strengthens the idea by this student that they don't belong. Yeah. I'm looking at the time. Uh, I have one final question before we close uh, this session. Uh, so there is a question what your advice would be for universities uh, that don't have uh, DNI officers and officers yet. So what would be the first steps uh, in initiating uh, DNI yep. Yep. officers? Yeah, I think uh, you have to start with your why. Why do you need a uh, DNI office? And uh, you need to problematize and, and work from there. And uh, I think for many, many years, it, it was just about gender diversity. And it was sort of presented as a business case that, well, we all could profit of, of more women in higher positions, etc. cetera. And uh, so it was like we had to prove that we were worth a lot if you had female professors. <coughs> but uh, I was always a bit hesitant about this business approach because I think we are, we are a public organization and I, I like to sort of um, um, go into the moral aspect of diversity and inclusion why are we in university and why do we why why what's our task in society and uh, what do we need to deliver so you really need to sort of look into the why and then go into what you will do and um 
And it is not an easy trajectory, I have to say that. But if a higher education or any organization truly takes this seriously, then they will allocate funding for it and allocate uh, uh, people so that they can really work on, on the topics that, that uh, urgently need our attention. Thank you, Samia. Thank you very much um, for your uh, presence here today and your uh, contribution uh, and the sharing of your uh, uh, thoughts and ideas. Um, again, it's very impressive what you have uh, reached so far at our university and I'm um, well convinced that many more great things will, uh, will come. Uh, and of course, it's very much needed. We all uh, acknowledge that. Uh, in this uh, I Belong team, at least. Uh, so thank you very much, and I hope to see you around in Rotterdam. All right, thank you. Have a, a great conference. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, Marike, and thank you, Simia, for uh, this uh, inspiring start. I think that we can now move uh, forward with um, the second panel.